So I thought I'd share a 10 minute video here of a food plot that we did for the first time um, using a no-till method. Uh, we've owned this property for a couple years now. We don't have any experience planting crops. We don't have any major equipment like tractors, um, plows and those kind of things. So no-till was the, the best method that we thought we would go with. So instead of creating some type of video that would be a how-to for others, because I'm not here to advise anybody else what they should do, I thought I would share my experience, given the fact that we hadn't done this before, showing you the steps that we did, um, some of the uh, the steps in the germination, and also a lot of the videos that I learned from, they walk you through a lot of the steps, but they didn't show the results of it. And so the last third of this video will be um, showing of how the, uh, the germination uh, came about and the success of it. So hopefully anybody watching this will get something from it. If you're learning to do a food plot or a no-till, hopefully this helps and you can take some key points away from it. So it's uh, late June here. I'm in Southern Ohio and I'm about to start the process of creating my first food plot with the land that I purchased about a year and a half ago. Actually, we started about two months ago putting a ton of lime down, actually about four tons of lime. And uh, so we're actually on step two right now. Step two is we're gonna cut this field. I have about two acres we're gonna plant. You might not be able to see it from the uh, from the video here, but uh, the grass, well, it's not really grass, grass and weeds are anywhere from three to four feet tall, maybe even five feet tall in some areas. So we're gonna go with the no-till. Um, all the research that we've done seems to say the no-till is the way to go. I'm still a little concerned about the seed, the soil contact, but I'm gonna mow this down, we're gonna kill it, and then we'll assess it from there. Let me see if, you, if I can get a good shot at how tall this stuff is. You can actually see behind me, some of this stuff is, uh, it's pretty thick, it's pretty tall. We had this bush hog uh, last year just for no purpose, just other than it hadn't been cleared in a couple years um, since the property had been sold. So, but it's uh, high now and uh, we, gotta, we gotta get it down. All right, we just got done mowing. Um, you can see actually that part there, that's not essential to the food plot. Actually, I'm gonna keep it for cover for the deer as they approach the, uh, the food plot to make it more secure. But uh, that took me about five hours, a good all day project. All in all, pretty good. A little longer than I hoped it would be, but um, pretty pleased um, that the swisher was able to get done. And we'll be back in two weeks to, uh, to spray. Okay, so we're uh, in mid-July now. We're back from, what was it, two weeks ago when we came and, and cut this uh, two acres down. You can see about, from I think from the video here, you can see about an acre. It goes on for about another acre after that. Um, this side we decided not to cut. Uh, this side here is where we're going to be planting uh, clover and brassica using a, uh, a Femco 15 gallon spray. Uh, used a uh, concentrate of 41% glyphosate. I got uh, the, uh, the mask, which I would recommend, the, uh, the goggles, the gloves actually. I'm in long pants, long sleeve shirt, had a hood on. We'll be back in, um, in a few weeks to plant and uh, we'll see how this first spray did. All right, uh, we're back here um, just a week after the last spray. It's July 30th. We're gonna be planting tomorrow, on the last day of July. So you can see here, the field is looking pretty good from the standpoint of uh, the overall kill. Um, some of this, uh, the grass you see still has a slight green into it, but it, they did say that it could take up to two weeks for the grass to uh, completely die at the roots when you spray it. So um, I'm not concerned about that. Actually, it's, it looks pretty dead as it is. On the other side of the other acre there, there's still some green. We're certainly got to spray again. Maybe it was just missed. Um, but I am in the process uh, of fertilizing here. You can see my uh, little back uh, ATV polar sprayer there. I was able to get out last night. It rained for a good 25 minutes for a pretty good downpour. So I raced up here and got about 300 pounds down. I got another 100 pounds we're going to put. Uh, the goal is to put 200 pounds per acre uh, for the brassica and for the... Uh, uh, for the clover as well too. I used uh, triple 12 for both. Uh, they say for clover, you don't need that high of a first number, which is 12. You could go more for like a five, 24, 24. Uh, that was my plan, but the, the store was out of it. And instead of racing around town trying to get something like that, I just grabbed the triple 12 and didn't overthink it. So um, probably doesn't need that much nitrogen for the clover, but it's not gonna hurt it. All right, so we're uh, back here today. Today's planting day, last day in July. 
and uh, we got the last part of that fertilizer down yesterday and uh, we're ready to go with the, the white tail uh, clover it uh, seems to get pretty good reviews um, and then nextly for the other side we're going to use three blends uh, from the same company of the biologic we have three different types of uh, uh, brassica and radishes we're going to mix those together again this is just more uh, my first try from the the reading up on uh, the re the reviews of the type of seeds that we're going to use so it's not I'm certainly not here trying to promote one thing or another because it's again it's my first time so we um, we won't know until the results come in so anyway we're gonna get that started we have uh, we're gonna use this uh, even spread um, we're just going to walk and seed spread. I'll take a look. So now we're in the process of actually laying down the seed. And we've already um, done the first acre of clover. And now we're working our way to the brassica and radishes. Um, and what you'll notice is that this is where the no-till process comes in, in which you don't not tearing up the soil. You're not disking or plowing it. Um, you're just leaving the soil naturally as it is. And we're just going to put that uh, seed right on top of that dead thatch, which is just basically a compilation of all the dead weeds and grasses that we've killed within the last month. The next step in the process is taking the drag arrow across the field after we got done seeding. And this is certainly something we're going to purchase next year. It was one of the most important tools we have. Our neighbors were kind enough to allow us to borrow one. But the most important thing is to seed the soil contact. And as you can see here, the thatch is very thick from all the dead grass and the weeds that we had killed for the summer. So the idea here was to lay the seed on top of the thatch, take the arrow across it, um, and really pushing that seed down to the soil. And then next we're going to come over uh, with a roller to make sure that the seed that has fallen down isn't obviously dug into the ground. It was just made firmly pressed onto the ground to make sure, again, the key point here is the seed to soil contact. So after this step is done, our job is complete. So right now we just got to sit back, pray for some rain and see how things turn out. So this is a still picture of what I saw when I came back three weeks later. And to be honest, as a first time planner, I didn't know if this was good or bad. I didn't know what to expect, so all I could do is hope that what I'm seeing was just a natural progression. Right now, just limited, um, obviously, germination um, and a little bit of greenery here and there, but I do see a lot of dead thatch, which did concern me. However, again, I didn't know what to expect and what I would see the next time I would return. Here's a picture of when we returned two weeks later, so five weeks after planting. And I'm feeling a little bit better about the greenery that I'm seeing. Some of the germination is really starting to come up. However, a lot of bare spots. I didn't know if this was normal. So what we decided to do is I applied 50 pounds of urea, which is really basic, uh, just pure nitrogen. We had 100% chance of rain the next day. So it was a really good time to do it. And it really paid off as you'll see here in the next uh, pictures. So here's a viewpoint of week eight, three weeks after we had just gone back there and saw that sporadic growth and to our amazement really it was a complete transformation of what we had been seeing um, you don't see any bare spots um, very limited weeds if any maybe some grass right there on the edge side but the 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 greens are very dark green maybe that's because of the nitrogen we had a lot of good rain during this time but still coming back and seeing this type of um, I'll use the word transformation was really to our amazement and we couldn't have been happier to how actually things had turned out. So here's a picture of our first acre in which we were planting clover with some radishes and some of those uh, sweet beets and late winter bulbs as well too. In the very center there, those radishes and the, the, uh, the winter bulbs are coming in terrifically. However, on the left and the right, what you're actually seeing there is 200 pounds of winter rye. Um, when we, uh, we first started noticing that our clover was not coming in and germinating the way we had hoped, so we had to kind of uh, go from a, a safety fail item, which winter rye is going to be terrific um, through winter forage and even into the late sp or the early spring when those deer will need it. It will give us a late, uh, really that winter green that we're going to need. And plus, I think I have a new strategy of where I want to plate my clover for next year anyway. So in all, I'm not too disappointed with that, but certainly something to learn for is as I plant clover next year and maybe understanding why that didn't germinate. So bringing the entire project to conclusion, and when we started this, we really didn't have any experience background just researching on YouTube the best way to do it. We chose the no-till uh, because we didn't want to disrupt the soil and have soil erosion. And we don't have any major equipment. We don't have tractors. We don't have tills and plows. 
So using the no-till method was the best um, best way that we thought to go forward and was to our um, opinion was a very good success. We started with weeds that were four to five feet tall as you can see here. Just within four weeks we got that field down to just um, completely killed off all the green vegetation, um, weeds and grass if you will. And then we got to the planting, did the fertilizing, and just obviously prayed for some rain. And what you see here, again, is a, is a terrific um, looking uh, food plot for the deer to come in. This will certainly serve as it starts frosting and that brassicas and that radishes become more palatable and the other green forage that they have is going away for the, uh, with the cold coming in. So hopefully anybody watching this for the first time of um, them going into um, some type of food plot. Um, hopefully this helps learning as far as things I did and uh, what other people do as well too. So um, good luck for anybody out there doing the same thing.